Hi, my name is Aaron. Today I'm just going to be making a quick tutorial on how to use Spy with a Parallella board. In this example, I'm going to be using the Parallella to connect to a Spy digital pot, and we're going to write a program that can fade an LED. So the parts you need are, is a Parallella, of course, a uh, cooling fan, its power connector, some alligator clips, a uh, porcupine breakout board, which I'll go over later, uh, the 8-bit digital pot, some breadboard jumpers, breadboard, uh, LED, and a 5-volt power supply. Okay, let's put all the hardware together, then we can go over the software. So we're going to take our Parallella, and this is a porcupine breakout board, which breaks out the GPIO pins from this really tiny connector. So this plugs right into the back of the Parallella. Okay, let's connect power to the Parallella. Also has a little cooling fan. The first generation parallel is required a cooling fan. Okay, looks like that's good to go. And let's connect our digital pot. So, this digital pot has a PMOD connector on it. So what that allows us to do is plug into the PMOD connector on the parallella, which is right here. So we're going to connect the PMOD connector to the bottom row of pins, face down. That's the correct configuration. And now we have our two channel pots right here, channel A and channel B. We're just going to be using channel A though. Now that our parallel is powered on, I'm going to connect an Ethernet cable so I can SSH into it. You could totally connect the HDMI monitor here and connect the USB hub there and use a keyboard and mouse and use a GUI, but I'm just going to SSH into it because I don't have the space for that. Okay, let's connect it to our breadboard. Connect the last six pins into the first six rows in our breadboard. And that's all set for connecting the pot. Now let's quickly go over how a pot works. This is a mechanical pot. We have two terminals, the middle one being the wiper, the two one being uh, the separate terminals. Um, these two separated terminals right here will have a constant resistance. So if this is a 100k pot, the resistance between here and here will always be 100k. What changes when you rotate this wiper though, when you rotate the stem though, is it moves the wiper, which is what this middle terminal is connected to. So our digital pot is almost identical. It has the same three pins, except instead of rotating this mechanically, uh, we do it in software with it's by writing an 8-bit value. So we have 255 steps when we rotate this, basically. Okay, let's go over how we can configure this pot to change the brightness of an LED. So let me draw what the pot looks like on paper. You got one terminal of the pot, it's a resistor, other terminal, and then we got the wiper. So the wiper rotates and changes the resistance between each two of these terminals, each one of these terminals. Okay, so that's what our symbol looks like for our pot. Now let's figure out how we can connect our LED. So there's really two possibilities how we can do this here. We could tie one of these, I mean, the wiper to one of the terminals, and now we can use the um, use a pot as a rheostat. But in this case, I'm going to use it as a voltage divider. So to use this as a voltage divider, we need to tie one end to ground, and the other one end to the five volt power supply. So when we write to the pot, it will change the voltage coming out of here according to the voltage divider equation. So this will give us a different voltage when we write to it and then we're going to connect this to our LED. So LED and that's going to go to ground because our LED is going to go to ground. All right. That's what an LED looks like. And now by writing to the pot really fast with different increasing and decreasing values we can make the LED fade because the voltage is going to increase and then decrease and then increase and decrease going to the LED. One thing to watch out for that some of you may be wondering about is what happens when the wiper goes all the way to 5 volts. Wouldn't that act like a short through the LED to ground? Because the LED is just a diode? Well it would except in this case our digital pot actually has a built in 200 ohm resistor right on the wiper so it's really more like that and we don't really have to worry about the, uh, too much current going through our LED anymore. 
all right, let's wire up the LED according to how we just, according to what we just talked about. So with an LED, the long pin goes to positive and the small pin goes to ground. So let's just arbitrarily call this end of our pot ground and the other further terminal, this one here, we're going to connect to 5 volts. The middle terminal is where our LED goes and that has to go to ground as well which also happens to be this last terminal. So let's put that in. Long pin going to the wiper, small pin going to ground. Okay, that should do it. Actually, let me put this further apart so you can, towards you, so you can see it better when we actually start fading it. Okay, so now we need to connect up our power supply. Alright, so I'm going to turn on our power supply. Set it to 5 volts, uh, limit the current just to be safe. Let's get one of our alligator clips, get our ground lead. So we got ground and positive 5 volts, yellow is going to go to ground, and red's going to go to 5 volts, so I got the wrong kind of jumper. Fantastic. Need a male to male, not a female to female. And it looks like it's already already lit right now. So that's a good sign. Now let's get to the software. Okay. So in this example, I'm going to be using uh, OS X 10.10. .10, but if you're using Linux, it should be very, very similar. Because I'm just going to be mostly using Terminal. Open Terminal and find the IP address of your parallel. So I'm going to ping it to figure that out. Its default name is Lenaro-Nano. We're going to see what IP address responds. Now we're getting a response from 192.168.1.227 so SSH into Lenaro at 192.168.1.227 okay default password as well as Lenaro and we're in okay now that we know we can SSH into it let's go ahead and get the example code I wrote so Google parallel examples Click on the first link and go ahead and just download the zip. Copy that to you. I'm going to copy that to my desktop, unzip it. And you're also going to need the spy bitbang library. So now Google parallel utils utilities. And download that as well. Unzip it. Okay, now we can close out of this. So I want to make a new folder that we'll copy over when we're ready. I'm just going to call it to the parallel. I'm just going to call it spy. And let's go ahead and look in these folders. So the example for the digital pot is in the folder digital pot. Open that up. Now I wrote two programs. The first one, digitalpot.cpp, is more complicated and involves involves like user input uh, the digital pot LED fade one's the most simple so let's just use that we'll copy that into our spy folder that's all we need now we need the necessary libraries and I'll show you why if I open if I open the code you can see it relies on the para underscore spy dot h file so let's go ahead and get all the stuff we need there so we need para underscore spy dot h and of course we're also going to need para underscore spy dot cpp uh, and actually para underscore spy also relies on para underscore gpio because it is just bit banging using the gpio pin so we're going to copy all that in and that should be all we need okay let's go ahead and copy that over and see if it will compile So I'm going to use FileZilla. You can obviously just use Terminal and FTP, uh, use SFTP to copy it over. But I'm just going to use FileZilla. So okay, I'm going 
drop it on the, our folder on the desktop. And let's go back to terminal. CD desktop, I mean that folder we just copied over, it was called spy. Make sure everything is still there. Looks good. So to compile it, I have the code right here, uh, the command here. And if you want to learn more about how this code works, I commented it uh, pretty thoroughly, so it should be pretty simple. So that's the command to compile. We should get no errors. And just to note, because we have all this in the same directory, the para underscore gpio, para underscore dot cpp in the same directory, we don't have to worry about linking it when we, uh, when we compile. So it compiles without errors. And let's go ahead and run the code. So to do that, we need sudo because we need root access to access the pins. And it's the name of our program was what? Um, digital pot LED fade. Okay, let's run it and let's go see how it looks. If you look, our LED is indeed fading. It takes about five seconds to fade and get to full brightness again. And if you look, it actually looks like it's not fading very linearly. Let's take a look under the scope just to see what our output looks like. So I removed the LED and instead connected the scope. And you can see, it looks like we instead, this must be a logarithmic pot because it's not, uh, the voltage is not linear. So must be a logarithmic pot and that will explain why our LED wasn't fading linearly but as you can see voltage is increasing and then decreasing and that's why our LED is fading I hope everything I did was clear I'll put all the parts for the pot um, in the data sheet in the description let me know in the comments what you think and thanks for watching